Hi, I'm Chris from Simply Classic. Welcome to my YouTube channel where we use inspiration and creativity to make something our own. Before we get started, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe. I need to know you all are out there interested in what I'm doing and wanting to see more videos and the way that you'll let me know that is by subscribing, leaving comments, asking questions, all those things. So please give me a thumbs up if you like what you see and subscribe. Now today, well, before I even, you've probably seen it in the thumbnail, but before I get started, let me tell you how this came about. I got a request um, by someone for a bag, and she didn't care what it was. She wanted a surprise. And she said her favorite color was black. She liked boho style. And she wanted a crossbody. So when I think of boho style crossbody bag, I'm thinking of a kind of a slouchy uh, rounded bag where the handles are part of the bag, not a lot of structure and a bohemian print. So I started looking for inspiration online and that's where I do a lot of my shopping, sitting in a doctor's office or waiting for whatever these days, food in the car or whatever we, we seem to wait for. I just, I scroll and I look and I, that's how I do my shopping. And I think I had Googled Bohemian, uh, Bohemian bag, Bohemian crossbody. And this came up and when I saw it, I'm kind of on a lace kick right now in case y'all hadn't noticed. I think this is the third video I've posted where there's some lacing involved. So of course that caught my eye. But then I got to thinking, you know, this is really a very um, sophisticated bohemian. It's a um, maybe upscale bohemian, chic. You could literally use this to go to work. But then it can transition into a weekend bag, or, you know, a weekend crossbody if you're going shopping or, um, you know, spending the weekend at the beach or whatever it may be. And it does stay true to the boho style. I felt it was just an upscale bow. So that's what we're gonna do. And um, the pattern we're using today is actually a spoon pattern. It is the Roxanne. Oops, upside down. It is the Roxanne. Now, this is a backpack. But the reason why I chose it is because in the inspiration picture, and I actually printed one, they had it in. And honestly, you know what? I don't know where it's from. I have went back to try to find it and I cannot figure out who the designer is. So I apologize for that. But they had it in black, they had it in like a tan and they had it in a dark brown. So I printed a picture in a tan color so that I could see it a little bit better. But you can see in this, picture here, it almost looks like it has a rounded bottom to me. So in an effort to not recreate the wheel, I went ahead and looked for a rounded bottom pattern and I came up with the Roxanne. So we're going to convert this into a cross body flap bag and I'm going to show you how to do those pattern changes. Now, the first thing I did was I printed the pattern at 75%. So that is one great thing about these patterns that we get PDF is you can print them at different, and you guys know this, but you can print them at different um, percentages and get a totally different looking bag. So I printed it at 75%. And then on the bag itself, You've got this, and this is at 100%. This is my pattern piece at 100%. You have this front panel, and you're supposed to put it on the fold. So essentially, it's doubled. So that is what this, this front panel right here is. And then you have a side panel that's doubled on each side, and then on the other side, you have a front panel that's doubled. So essentially, if you look at this, this pattern piece, and you look at how many panels you have on each side, it's one, two, three, four panels. So what I did to get a solid front is I took my pattern piece and 
you know, it says put on the fold. So I just went ahead and extended it out so that I had one full panel. Then I did it again, I doubled it. So what I came up with at 75% is a pattern piece that looks like this. Now, of course it has all my drawings on it because I had to go through and figure out where to punch my holes and where to do the pattern and all that kind of stuff, drew it out. But this is what I end up with. So this is a 75% quadrupled pattern piece, okay? So once you do that, you do not have to change the bottom because you're not changing the size of this pattern piece. You're just changing how you sew it together. So the bottom piece was the same. For the back, what I did was I extended the front by um, two inches. And then I folded, I marked two, um, two inches down and I folded it and then cut my back. And then I marked down 1.75 inches, folded it and cut a strip just this long, just this big. So what that gave me was two pieces for my back with a seam allowance. So once you sew them together and then you flip this up, you're gonna end up with the same dimensions as the front, okay? So there's that change. Then we had to do a flap. So, if you look at the inspiration piece, you'll see that the, the flap is circular and then these two pieces are also circular. So this is like a fourth of a circle and this is a half of a circle. And I have a circle template that I got a long, long, long time ago. And I'm gonna look to see if I can find it on um, Amazon and link it for you, but if you don't have this, or if you can't find it, no problem. Use a plate. You know, we've got dinner plates, we've got salad plates, so use whatever size plate you need. Um, you can also use, you know, things like, um, I mean, just look around your sewing room, maybe uh, lids to, to Tupperware containers, or just whatever you can find that's circular. So on my template, I ended up, using the nine inch pattern here, the nine inch circular pattern. So I guess theoretically, if you were to have a full circle, it would be an 18 inch um, diameter, right? Di the diameter is the full and the radius would be nine because nine's half. I think that's how that works. Um, and then I did another one and I cut it in half. So I had half a half circle for the top and then I had two um, quarter circles for the side pieces now on the inspiration piece you can see it looks like they actually cut this out laced it and then sewed it on to the front I'm sure a machine cut all these little holes out and not some crazy lady that thought it was a good idea to punch all the holes right so I'm sure that's probably why they did that. In an effort to save a step, I didn't do that. I just went ahead and made all the holes in the actual front of the panel, okay? So on this piece, you'll see I have one laced and I have one not laced because I wanted to show you all the holes. And then on the flap, what I did, I'm using real leather. I, it's actually a um, deer skin that I got from, I think it was Uncle George. He's got a Facebook page and if you watch, you can see when he posts things and you can tell him what you want and he'll send it to you. So on the flap, what I did was I glued two pieces of leather together and then just cut the edge, sewed it, burnished it, and I'm gonna do a little bit of edge coat on it. And then I punched 
I don't know how many holes it is, but I think it's about a thousand holes. It feels like that. Holes. So you can see this is more than half a circle though. So what I did is once I got to the half circle mark, I looked at my bottom pattern piece to get the width of it. Added that onto the flap, because if you think about it, your flap comes from the back, it goes across the top, and then it goes down. So I added for that across the top part. And then I added two and a quarter inches for the back. Now the reason why we cut the back separate is because we're going to put the back piece, we're gonna put, so the flap, right sides together, let's see, on the back piece like this, when we sew it together, okay? And then we're going to put this extra flap on there, right sides together, so that when this splits up, we're gonna have a nice back. And then we'll be able to do a couple of rivets here to hold it in place. So that's just gonna be a little extra security for the flap. Um, so that the flap's not just sewn into the top stitching seam. Okay, so there really wasn't a lot of pattern changes. It was really just printing the pattern at 75%, cutting the back in two, adding seam allowance, and then making a flap. And your flap doesn't have to be circular. It can be whatever shape you want. Um, just make sure you extend it, the depth of the bag, plus go ahead and extend it so you can stick it in your back seam to give it a little extra stability. Okay, so really the biggest part of this whole thing was making the pattern to punch all the millions of holes. So my pattern pieces, here's my flat pattern piece. And here is my side or my front pattern piece. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you how to do this. It looks like a lot, but really it's not that bad. So as I said, I took my template here and I used the nine inch circle and drew it on on paper and cut it cut it out. Okay, then I cut that in half, so I have a, a fourth of a circle. Now, when you're sewing it, or when you're putting it in your, your front here, you need to remember you have a seam allowance that you're gonna have to attach the back to and you're gonna have to attach the bottom to. Seam allowance is half inch. So you don't wanna bring the, the lacing all the way to the edge, or you don't wanna start it there, because if you do, you're not gonna be able to see it and you're gonna try to sew over it and it's gonna be tough and you're gonna get frustrated and it's not gonna work. So on the actual pattern piece, I drew in a half inch seam allowance. And that's where you see this line right here and this line right here, okay? Now you can use a, um, I guess it's called a protractor, where you put your, your dot here and you draw circles with your protractor. I, you can do that, or you can use a template like what I have, or you can use a plate and you can just slide it down and just mark lines. So what I did was, and let me measure this so I can tell you exactly. Okay, so from the seam allowance right here, this point right here, going out, that's four inches. Okay. So I came down a quarter of an inch and I drew a line, circular line going all the way around. Went down another quarter of an inch. You're gonna do another line. Now you see here, my lines are every quarter of an inch, but really, and I'm gonna flip this over, you need a quarter of an inch for your first line, a quarter of an inch down from there for your second line. Then you can go a half inch then quarter inch, quarter inch, half inch, quarter inch. Here's why. Is because the very first line right here 
between your X's and that line is a quarter inch. Your X's are a half inch. Then between the X's and the line is a quarter inch. Between, again, the line and the X's is a quarter inch, but your X's are half inch. Then you have quarter inch, quarter inch. So figure out how many rows you want of what. Maybe you don't want lines, or maybe you don't want X's, maybe you want all lines. And just know that between each pattern is a quarter inch. If you're gonna do X's, you need to give yourself a half inch. So from, again, from the starting point out here, I went down quarter of an inch, then half inch, then quarter, quarter, half, quarter, quarter. And once you make your half circles or your lines on here, then you just need to figure out how far away your dots are. And you can see I actually drew X's on there because I wanted to see how it was going to look. I ended up putting the lines, the straight lines, about three eighths of an inch apart. And then I ended up putting the X, the, the holes for the X's about a half inch apart. Now, because this is not square, this is circle, as you go to do your X is, X, your circles for your X's, they're going to be the the dots are going to be closer on this line than on this top line because you have if you were to measure this line right here it's shorter than the line above it okay make sense so from from this dot to this dot is shorter than from this dot to this dot so your hole is going to be a little bit closer when I was trying to determine where to put those holes, I would line up my ruler right on this very center point right here, go to my outside dot and go straight down to make another dot. And then I would move the ruler, keep it on the center dot to figure out where the next dot went. So for instance, and the reason why I'm, I'm trying to show you this is because you might want a different pattern. I'm just trying to show you how to achieve it. So you're gonna keep one point of your ruler right here on this center dot. You're gonna pick a dot and you're gonna stick it in there. And then you're just going to move your ruler like this, always staying on this center dot down here where my finger is and make your, make your dots, make your lines, okay? You're gonna do the same thing for the top here for this uh, flat. Now you'll see I have all these dots. What I did is I made pencil marks and then when I did my holes my, with my hole punch, that's when all the actual dots were made. Okay? All right. So what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna show you how I laced it. I'm gonna lace this other side, show you how I laced it and how we began and ended the lace. Okay. I want to explain a little bit more and show you how I actually made this pattern. The pattern is obviously the key in this bag, um, in this, uh, the change to this bag. So as I mentioned, I have this template and I'm gonna link it below if I can find something similar. I got it years and years ago at a, some kind of uh, sewing expo. But you can also use, like I mentioned, a plate or um, a bowl or something if you have that or if not you can use one of these gadgets and my husband and I had a big thing about this is called a protractor or is this called a compass and I think it's a compass but it's not obviously the compass where you tells you if you're going north south east west um, and I think we've all probably used these when we were in school where you put your dot in the middle and you draw your lines but I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you um, using that method and using this template. So what I did is I just took a blank piece of paper, piece of craft paper, and I folded it in half to mark the center, and I just put a tiny little dot right here um, to mark the center, okay? From there, on this template, there is a place right here, a solid line that says fabric fold line. So we're gonna use that as 
the base. Now, before we um, even get started on it, well, actually, no, we're, we're going to use that for the base. So we're going to line up this center dot. There's a, um, get a pin here. See, there's a little hole right here where you mark your center. Line up your center. I'm going to do that and then mark, line up the center solid line on the end of the, the paper. And then you just draw whatever diameter you want um, or whatever line you want. I used nine inches for the bag that I did, and, and if you remember, I did it 75%. So I'm just going to do the nine inch line. So you just draw a line. And then you have half of a circle. From there, I took another piece of paper and I added two inches for the takeup of the bag, but the width of the bag, and then two and a quarter inches for the back part of the bag so that it could go in that. Um, and you'll see a little bit later on when we go through it, it'll go into the seams that'll hold it a little more securely. So I'm going to go get some tape and I'm going to, sh well actually even before we do that, because I, I did it afterwards, I marked from this line a half inch seam allowance, or a half inch, that's where we're going to do our first line. Now. What you could do on my template here, when I line this up at nine and then I do a line at eight, so let me line this up again. Okay, there's my mark at nine. So if I draw a line at eight and then seven, and I think I actually did six as well. These lines are actually right at a half inch apart. So we were able to use this as our main, the outside line is our main cut line. Then we're going to start the first in and out half inch in. So starting from the center, I knew my first two holes need to be centered on the line because if you remember that's where, where if you you know look you're gonna see that's where the tassel is gonna go so each one of these lines was about three-eighths of an inch apart so I've just put my ruler on the center mark at two-eighths put a line at one-eighth and a line or a dot at one-eighth and a dot at three-eighths so now what that does is it sets up the two main dots to go in. So it's going to go from the front to the back and then every three eighths I marked all the way on this line. Okay, So I use my ruler and I literally, and again this is the most time consuming part, I did three eighths, three eighths, three eighths, and I kept on down. Now, to cheat a little bit, I did one side and then I folded this in half and I used my awl, my sewing awl, to punch the holes in and then it automatically got the same spacing on the other side. So that's a good way to only have to worry about working half the pattern. Now, from this first design line, we only want to commit a fourth of an inch before we start our X's. So between this line and this line we know is a half inch. So now we need to do a fourth of an inch. So that would be a good time to use your little tool, handy dandy tool here. You're gonna put the point without the drawing tool right on your center mark. And you're gonna look and see where halfway is. And you can eyeball this, you don't have to be perfect. And then without moving this, you're just going to come down. And you're going to do the same thing on this side, all the way down, okay? So now we have a perfectly drawn line, one-fourth of an inch from 
this line, and that's where our X's are gonna start. Now our X's need to be a half inch, so we need to draw another line for the top side of our X's between these two lines. So I'm gonna grab this again, put it on my center mark, figure out where halfway is, and you can measure this if you want, but I don't know that you need to be that, that exact. And we're just going to draw a line. We're gonna come all the way around. We're gonna come up here. Oops, and I obviously moved, but you get the idea. You can come all the way down, okay? Now, you you can buy these at Walmart. You probably pay like, I, mean, I don't know, a dollar or something. I mean, they're really not that expensive, so you can get this anywhere. So if you don't have this template or you don't want to spend the money on buying this template, don't. Just get one of these and it'll work just as well. So now when I did my X's, my X's were half inch apart. So I started in the center and I put a dot. And then every half inch on this line, I put another dot. Half inch, one inch, half inch, and one inch. Then what I did is I took my ruler and I lined it up on this dot. We keep using this dot as the center point. And on the line we just drew, I would put another dot for the bottom part of the X. Without moving this part of my ruler, I'm just gonna turn it until I see my next half inch dot, and I'm gonna put another dot. Let's make sure you stay on the line. Okay, I'm gonna turn it until I see my next half inch dot, make sure this part of the ruler's on the line, and put another dot. And do the same thing, and you're gonna go all the way around. So what that does is it's gonna create, and I'm gonna draw this X in so that you can see where I'm going with this. Okay, so this is our in, out, in, out, and then these are gonna be our X's. This line right here that we drew, it doesn't, we're actually not gonna use it. I mean, it's gonna be the middle of the X, but you're not gonna really use it. We did it because it was part of that template, but we really needed to use it as a halfway point to find our quarter mark. So then a quarter of an inch down, which so we can use this line, we're gonna do the same thing with our dots. We're gonna do in and out, in and out. So you can start here in the middle, you know, put a dot or put two dots to straddle the middle. And then every three eighths of an inch, use your ruler, and every three eighths of an inch, mark dot, one, two, three, dot, one, two, three, dot. Okay. So now a quarter inch from there, we need to make another line so we can know where to start our X's. Because if you remember, there's in and out X, in and out X, and then it stops there. This is for the flat. Okay. So I'm going to take this again, and this time I'm going to use my ruler because I want to see where quarter of an inch is. So that's half inch, so that's quarter of an inch. I'm going to go ahead and set it on that line. And then I'm just going to draw down and draw down this way. Then we need to go a half inch down from there because if you remember the width of the X is the height, I guess you could say of the axis is a half inch. So half inch, bring my protractor in, get to the half inch mark. And again, I'm always starting at the same dot here. And I'm gonna draw the line. Okay. So I'm gonna start in the center for my X's, put a dot, and then I'm gonna go out, use my ruler, go out half inch, add an inch, half inch, add an inch. Line your ruler up with the bottom dot, go to the top dot you made, the top half inch dot, and make the bottom of the X, a dot for the bottom of the X. Do the same thing here. And you do the same thing here. Now the reason why you do that and you don't measure a half inch for the bottoms is because this line 
is shorter than this line. So in order to get your X's to line up right and to have the same amount of dots, you're gonna have to use this center point and use the angles to mark your dots. So now this is gonna be our X here, here, here. And you see how much I had to turn my ruler there to get that X in? You're gonna see the angle changes a little bit with these, and that's okay. Okay. So, again, in an effort to not have to do the whole thing and, and recreate the wheel, I'm gonna fold it at my center mark, fold it all the way, and then I'm just going to take my sewing awl which I need to get. Hold on just a second. Okay. It's right in front of me the whole time. So I'm going to take my awl and you might want to um, maybe staple these pages together just to make sure that it shift. Everywhere you have a dot, you're just going to poke through the paper. both the in and outs and the X's. And then, of course, this design, oops, this design is gonna go all the way, all the way up and around, okay? Then when you open it up, you can see your holes on this side, and they're gonna m mirror the holes on this side. So when you go to punch your holes in your flap, you're going to want to clip this to the flap, and I just use Wonder Clips to clip it to the flap, and then use your hole punch to go through and punch all the holes and then they're all evenly spaced on both sides of the flap. So I'm gonna show you how I do the flap extension, how I did that. And the corners of the front that have the lacing is literally just a fourth of this, and it's turned this way, and it's put in each corner. Now, we do have a quarter inch, or excuse me, a half inch seam allowance you have to draw in. So you're not gonna be able to punch your holes within that half inch mark. So let me go get some more paper and that way we can go ahead and extend this and I can show you how I did the extension on the flap. So what I did here is I just added an extension. I actually added two extensions onto this flat piece that we've been working on. Still have my center dot here, and that's the point that we use to, of course, make all the lines. I measured two inches from that flap or from the, where the edge of the paper was, and you can certainly draw that in if it helps. Oops, be even more helpful if I could hold it straight. Okay, so I'm gonna measure two inches up from there and draw a line. And that's gonna be for our, the, the width of the purse, okay? Now what I did on, on mine, and you don't have to do this on yours, but what I did on mine is I extended these lines straight up. Because the edge is no longer curved, this is no longer curved as well. So you can go ahead and you can extend your lines. That way you can extend the X's and the ins and outs, your, your stitch all the way through to here. Now, I don't think I would take it in the back of the purse. I think I would end it right where that flap, I mean, theoretically, the way this is gonna go is this is gonna come from behind here going to go over the purse and then this is going to be the front flap. So I did put the design on the top here. 
to not put it on the back where the flap's going to attach. I then took this, folded it in half, and cut, excuse me, measured two and a quarter inches up, drew a line, cut that off. Now we have our two inch width, and then we have two inches that's gonna end up going into the back flap. But then I also took this and angled it. So from the two inch line, basically we just wanna go from two, this last two and a quarter inches. All I did, first of all, I need to get these even. All I did is from that point, just angled it slightly. And your angle doesn't matter how you do it. I mean, you don't wanna angle it too much, um, but I just angled it slightly. And if you cut them together, the angle's gonna be the same. So now you have this slight angle here that's gonna actually tuck into that seam, okay? So, Take the time to make your flat pattern. Take the time to make your sides, which you could really use the same pattern. Just make sure that you, um, maybe maybe you can make a copy of it. You can copy machine. Go ahead and do this. Make a copy of it and then cut it in half. You can use the same one, but it's going to end here. It's it's not going to be the full flat piece. Obviously, it's only going to be the original circle that we did. Cut it in half, add your seat, your half inch seam allowance, and then you can add two more lines because on the bottom front of the purse, there's an in and out and X, an in and out and X, and then two more ins and outs of the design. So add that there with your compass here and you will be ready to get started. Okay, so instead of trying to cut quarter inch lace for this project. Um, I went ahead and ordered some of this off Amazon and I'll put a link in the description below for it. It is a uh, faux leather suede lace and it, it came in a lot of different colors. It was really impressive how many colors they had. Um, of course, I just got the black because I knew I was doing this black lacing. But if you wanted something um, different in your lacing, red or purple, green, I mean, anything. They had all kinds of colors. Now, another thing is, um, I was thinking as I was going through this, it would be really neat to, instead of using something like this, use ribbon. Ribbon, like a little quarter inch ribbon would be really pretty. Um, another thing you could do that I thought about afterwards was some jute, um, like rope, that jute twine stuff. I think that might be really neat for a boho style, especially if it's not black, but maybe a different color. That would be, I might have to do one of those. I thought about that after I thought, oh, I like that. Um, you could use lace, you could use, you can do anything. And what I'm trying to do with these videos is to give you, get you thinking, think about, um, and search for inspiring things and how to do things differently because I think we can get burnt out sometimes on the patterns we do but the pattern makers are really excited about what I'm doing here and I think the reason why is because they want to see their patterns used in different ways they want you to know that the pattern is a guide and it's up to us as the seamstresses to take that as a, as a guide you know do the basics but then embellish it and, and make it special so, what, you're gonna need about two yards of the lacing to do one side. So the first thing I did is just came up, and this is a lot easier to do than the last lacing job we did. <laughs> it is um, much, much easier. So you're just kind of gonna, gonna kind of go in and out, in and out. 
and I know this is black and it's hard to see, but I will bring it closer here in just a minute so you can see what I'm doing. In and out, in and out, pretty easy. Yeah, this might be a really good thing too for if you have um, a little one at home that wants to help you sew and they maybe they're not ready for a sewing machine yet you could give them something like this go ahead and you know punch the holes for them and then give it to them and let them do this lacing um, it's not difficult at all and it would get them involved in the project and i think it would be it would be good good form we need to teach the younger generation to sew if we can and get involved in things like this i think it's a dying art too many computers out there, computer games. Okay, so once we're through with this row, what I do is we're going to start to do the X's. And you want to do all the X's in the same direction, so just be cautious of that. It doesn't really matter which direction, but once you set it, you gotta kinda stay with it. Okay, so there's the, just in and out, easy enough. So you see here how these holes are half inch apart? That's where we're gonna do our X's. Now, over here, you'll see the X from, let's see, I guess you would call it lower left to upper right is the one on top. So we want to make sure we keep with that over here. So let's see, I'm going to start here and go down. That right, let's see. I think that's right. And then up. And come down. So, you're going to leave the bottom hole empty. You're gonna start up here and you're gonna go crosswise. Then you're gonna go straight up and you're gonna go crosswise. I'm gonna go up to this hole right here and go crosswise, up, cross, up, cross. In the back, you see it's a straight line. And if you look at this side, see how they're all straight line? It's a straight line. So once you get through going in this direction, then you're gonna turn around and you're gonna lace it in that direction. Then you're going to do your in and out here. Then you're going to do another row of X's and then you're going to do two more in and outs. So I'm going to do that. And when I'm through, I will come back. Okay. So here's our front all done. Okay. And of course, when we sew, we're going to take up some of the seam allowance here on the side and on the bottom. And it should fit perfect. Now, one flap, a word of caution. I put a snap here, a, a magnetic snap, because I thought, you know, you gotta keep this closed somehow. And so, just make sure you put it above where your holes are going, because if you put it down here where you would normally put a snap, you're gonna run into problems. Okay. The other thing I noticed is that on the inspiration picture, it appears, and of course it's always hard to know if you don't have the bag here, but it appears that this bottom straight here comes down and actually helps hold this tassel in. Now, I don't know if it does or not, but I did not sew a, um, an extension here for my tassel, so that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to bring it in, I'm going to bring it down, and use a, um, a ring for that. 
and the tassel looks like just a bunch of actual um, lacing. It's actually a little wider, but, and then it has one just wrapped all the way around, which is interesting. So um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it that way. I think I might just do a tassel the regular way I do a tassel. But our next step is to go ahead and do the lacing on the flap. And as you can see, on the bottom here, we had extra straight edges. You know, we had um, in and out X's, in and out X's, and then we had a couple in and outs. Or on here, we have an in and out an X, in and out an X, and that's it. So just make sure when you make your pattern, that's all that you account for. Now, on the front of the bag, what I did is I took the edges here and just brought them straight down and just stitched. And here I brought it straight over and stitched to hold the edges in so you don't have to worry about it coming unraveled. On the back, or on the flap, we're not gonna do that because we don't have an opening to do it. So what we're gonna have to do is when we're through, and you're gonna see the back of this, of this lacing, is we're gonna have to kinda intertwine it and then maybe put a little glue to hold it so that way it doesn't come unlaced. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on lacing the flap The flap is done. I cut four yards of the lace to do it and I ran out and I had to cut another two yards and I barely made it. So I would say you're gonna need at least, if you're gonna do the same pattern in design, you're gonna need at least six yards of lace. You might wanna cut a little extra just to be safe. So what I did on the back, now I, I skipped the two holes right here in the center, I'm gonna use that to get the tassel on. And I just kinda weaved the tails in, try to make it look a little fancy, put just a little bit of glue on there, and then right here I had to tie one off. So I just tried to blend it in as best you can, um, as best as I could, and I think that's gonna be about what you can do. You know, you're just gonna do the best you can with it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put right sides together and we're gonna baste our flap on. To make sure the centers are lined up. And then once that's basted on, we're gonna put our second piece, our, our um, extension on. We're going to center it as well. And we're gonna sew that on at a half inch seam allowance. So we have everything sewn together. We used a half inch seam allowance. Now what we're gonna do is flip the flap up and let the seam allowance come towards the back, the bottom. And we are going to stop, top stitch this at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. I don't worry about back stitching beginning and the end when I have an intersecting seam, meaning we're going to sew the front, you know, the side seams together and that seam is gonna be intersected. So I don't worry too much about back stitching there. Now what we're going to do is put, I'm gonna put some rivets here just to kind of hold that good and secure. But our back is done. So now what we're gonna do, take our front and we're going to sew right sides together. We're just gonna sew the sides together. Make sure our bottoms line up now. Remember, we're using a half inch seam allowance here. So we wanna make sure we stay on the, um, in the inside of our stitching, which we should, because we give ourselves enough room and it should just really come very close to that stitching right there. 
you know, half inch is just about a quarter of an inch away from that. So we'll go ahead and So you can see how the stitching went right beside, but not on top of the lacing. Of course, it went over these edges, which is good because we want to secure those down so the lacing doesn't come undone. Our side seams done and my front piece here ended up being just a little bit bigger than my back piece so I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off so that it's even and then I'm going to glue down these side seams um, with them being leather and thick and I really think I'm gonna have a better chance of gluing them down. Probably cutting the, out the seam allowance right here because it's pretty thick. And then gluing them down to get them good and flat. And then what we're gonna do is pin the bottom in and get ready to stitch it. So I will come back in just a minute for that. Sides have been glued down. Word of caution, don't put glue where your holes are. It's going to go through to the front. So, went ahead and clipped on the bottom. So now what I'm going to do is using a half inch seam allowance. I'm just going to go all the way around. I did clip the, let me just show you. I did clip, clip the bottom piece. So I just put little snips in it. Snip, 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 and that way it, it tucks in there real good. And if you see, the reason why you have to do that is you've got some puckering in here. Because this, this part of the purse is longer than this part. So by putting little clips in there, it's allowing the fabric to fold over itself. And that way it should lay nice. So I'm going to sew this in, and then we're going to be able to turn it around and take a look at it. Sewed the bottom on, trimmed it down, trimmed the seam allowance down. So now we're going to turn it and we need to figure out the placement of our, of the other side of our, um, our snap. So. Okay, what I did was I took 12 foot sections and just looped them of this lace. First of all, let me say, put a tab here. I should have done that and I didn't. Thinking that I could loop it around this, which we're gonna make it work, but in, if I was to do it again, I would definitely sew a tab right here in the middle of this to put a D-ring on and that way you could do a tassel. So what I did was I took a 12 inch piece, threaded it through these two holes because they were open let it come out this other side, took some 12 inch pieces of the lace. So I just took, you know, 12 inches, 12 inches, 12 inches, kept doing that until I got a good amount, which when I folded it in half, thought would make a good tassel. Okay, so that's what I have here. So I used, threaded the, the lace through here, tied, put, laid it down flat, tied this on I had my 12 inch pieces tied it on so that and then folded it in half so that it formed this put double-sided tape around this section here to hold it on okay so now you can probably still see some of the double-sided tape right there and this is the loop that I had going around and it's actually the double-sided tape sticking pretty good so what I want to do is I want to cover the rest of the double-sided tape. So I'm just going to take all of these pieces. It doesn't matter how long they are right now. We're going to give it a haircut. 
We're just gonna take them all down straight, okay? And I probably can even just tie it off right here. Keep them all together and straight. Let's say that. I think I've got a piece right here. Yeah, let me just tie this off. Keep this out of my way. Okay. I'm put it this way. All right, so this is what we have so far. So now what I'm going to do is take you know, take a good section of the lace, probably a good arm's length. And I'm going to remember, of course, the tail is the tail that's on the outside of what I tied together, so I know where the tail is. I'm going to form a loop at the top. And then I'm just going to wrap the rest of this around in a neat fashion. So then I'm going to take this end and I'm going to thread it through my loop. And then I'm going to pull the tail. And it should pull that loop down. You see how it's pulling it down? And it's going to pull it right inside underneath all of the threading that I just did. And then you're going to cut it off. <laughs> this and then we're going to give it a haircut as long as we want it now the inspiration tassel is pretty long it definitely goes beyond the bag you can see in this picture here I don't know how far down but it definitely goes beyond the bag the bottom of the bag. So we want this tassel to do the same thing. So let's say right about there. Okay. Whoop. All right. So I'm going to put the strap on and then we'll see how it looks. Okay y'all, here's the completed bag. It actually turned out really cute, didn't it? The tassel is kind of cute, I like it. And it kind of replicates or looks like the, um, the tassel and the inspiration. So of course it has the crossbody. Um, I already showed you the inside with the bright pink lining, which I think is so cute. So, Again, please subscribe to my channel so I can keep doing these and know what you like. And, and make suggestions to me. You know, if you see a bag that you like and you're not really sure how to tackle it, send me a picture of it. I'll see what I can do. I can't do everything, but I can certainly try. And, um, or if you have any questions or comments or anything at all, just please leave them down below. Subscribe, give me a thumbs up, like it, and I will continue making them. And... Until then, get some inspiration and happy sewing.